I would just say to every, like everybody going and like doubting themselves and not being sure, just like find like a fundamental set of values that you would apply and stick to them and, and, and believe in yourself. Because if it's possible, that means you have no excuses you need to work towards it. Gamita is a biotechnology company using cell engineering to develop novel therapeutics for the diseases of the female reproductive system. One thing I've noticed is that ovaries age up to five times faster than the rest of the woman's body. Relative decline in ovarian function results in infertility, which is why we have these sentences that an ovary is geriatric when a woman is in her like mid to late 30s when the rest of her body is certainly not. And then later on, menopause is like an absolute decline of ovarian function. And menopause is also associated with woman's life expectancy, so it's almost like a mirror of the aging that occurs in her body. So even though we end up living longer after menopause, we women end up having more diseases than men. And a funny fact was that it's really only humans and four types of whales that experience menopause and ovarian aging as we do. So perhaps it's not even an evolutionary imperative. If we can now expect to live even to 100, the fact that we spend two thirds of our life infertile and half of our life in this stage of poor health post-menopause is just no longer fit for purpose, even though if it wasn't corrected by evolution. So I felt that there was an, a huge unmet need to provide therapeutics, so medicines, real medicines, that will allow us to gain the function we'll lose throughout life. We have 1 billion women living with menopause right now. There were studies showing that up to a third would take treatments for it if they, if they good treatments existed. So I finally felt that there is an unmet clinical need where we believe that we can add value right now. It's a great market, established healthcare industry, unlike aging, which is like a, a slow, subtle, sophisticated process. And something I was immensely passionate about and I felt that is, is necessary and important for the society. I was born in South Serbia and I did my education in the United Kingdom and I was a medical student at UCL Medical School. And after second year of medical school, after finishing my neuroanatomy exams, I actually got discovered through this talent competition, which was called the F-Factor. It was the very first year it was being organized and the idea was that it would be like X-Factor, but for STEM. So through that, I really uh, learned what's venture capital. I was incredibly excited by the ability, like the, the lack of hierarchy that people would think that you're smart and write you a check. And I'm like, oh, because it's not so common in, in medicine. This entrepreneurial community showed to me a path how you could form companies and solve the problems you're passionate about. So since then, I've been in the space trying to really use technology and this entrepreneurial spirit and the support of entrepreneurs to help me solve the problems I feel I could contribute to and are really important in healthcare. We raised 40 million so far and we were fortunate enough to be backed by some of the leading investors like Future Ventures, Inside Partners, Bold Capital, Salt, Lux Capital. So I think people have really understood that this has been an underfunded area and that both infertility and just diseases of the female reproductive system. Fundraising, I mean, it's it's always a, it's tough, but it's like a good challenge. And usually you, you learn a lot. It helps you delineate where you, you don't want your company to go and where you want your company to go. When everything happened around the Supreme Court decision, I felt personally very kind of, okay, what do we do now? There were some scares or would it affect the assisted reproduction industry. So I spent the, that weekend uh, speaking with all of our physicians and employees, understanding what will happen, because we obviously work with clinics in many states different politics and what happened was that actually there have so far been no consequences on assisted reproduction and IVF. I fundamentally believe that you should not let any crisis go to waste. Every tragedy should be turned into a business opportunity and that's how I've operated. So what I've, we've decided to do after reflecting on it, we should really use this to shine light on, on many things that have been fragmented in women's health. I'm extremely passionate about two things in life because those are two things I experience, healthcare and education. So I would really like to make it because then I can go to any child that is hiding in the basement from some war and tell them, look, if, if I've done it, then you can do it. And it's completely possible.